Factor market margin analysis, take one. Hey everybody, still on the factor market. And now we're gonna kinda of like step back for a second, okay? We're gonna do some marginal analysis, which is so important in economics. We make decisions at the margins, okay? And, and for the factor market, what's so important are these two guys right here, these two acronyms. Marginal revenue product of some factor or some resource. My default, I always go with is labor. So marginal revenue product of labor, marginal factor cost of labor, okay? The marginal revenue product of labor, how do we get that? Well, we had this in another video, but I wanna go through it again very quickly just to make sure that we've absolutely got this. Marginal revenue product of labor. What is this? The additional revenue we get from hiring another laborer. So what's the additional revenue we get from hiring another laborer? Well, what we need to know is how many more products can that laborer make? Sorry, I'm just gonna put that a little high right there. How many more products can that laborer make? And what tells us that? The marginal product of labor. The marginal product of labor is the additional products we get from hiring one more laborer. So now we know how many more products that we're gonna get when we hire another laborer. Now we wanna know, well, what's the money that we're gonna get from that, okay? So generally speaking, we say times marginal revenue. Now I've got a little caveat here, okay? If you're not talking about perfect competition in the product market, if you're not talking about perfect competition in the product market, it's actually a little bit more complicated than this formula. But if you are talking about perfect competition in the product market, this formula works great. Why do I say that? When you've got perfect competition in the product market, okay, then that means MR is that horizontal line, right? It's constant. It's the same at all levels of output. So you can do MRP sub L times MR. If you've got market power, MR is downward sloping, MR is changing at different levels of output. So it's a little bit more complicated. But this works for perfect competition. So once again, let's get the big picture, right? Marginal revenue product of labor. Here's the additional products a laborer can make times the additional revenue each product gets times e the additional revenue each product gets. You put those together and you've got what you want, which is the marginal revenue product of labor, which is the marginal benefit of labor to the firm, okay? From the firm's perspective, theory of the firm, right? From the firm's perspective, that's the marginal benefit of hiring more workers. This one's pretty straightforward. In fact, I don't even know why I have an equal sign. I'm not even gonna say it's like equal to any formula. Marginal factor cost of labor, okay? This is just the marginal cost of labor. The only reason they really have an F right here is when you see MC generally, you think of the product market. So they've just put this F in here to remind you this isn't the product market, this is the factor market. So it's the marginal factor cost of labor, but it's basically just the marginal cost of labor. It's the additional cost of hiring one more labor. That's it, it's as simple as that, right? It's the additional cost of hiring one more labor. So this is the marginal cost to the firm. So how many laborers should we hire? Well, in economics, we know if MB, if the marginal benefit of something is greater than the marginal cost of something, do it. So if the marginal revenue product of labor is greater than the marginal factor cost of labor, hire them, okay? Simple as that. Keep hiring more laborers until what happens? Until MB, equals MC until the MRP sub L equals the MFC sub L. What does this tell us? This tells us how many laborers to hire. Hire until you get here. Honestly, you can hire all the way to there minus one, but that one I don't really focus on that much. I don't think it's important. This is the big deal, okay? Hire all the way to that point. So that's how many laborers to hire. But then there's gonna be another question. Here's where it gets more interesting. They're gonna say, okay, you can hire laborers or you can buy capital and you've only got so much money, right? Should you spend money on laborers or should you spend money on capital? Okay. So when we do this, here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, all right, marginal revenue product of labor over the marginal factor cost of labor is going to give us the benefit of labor per dollar spent. It's going to be the benefit of labor per dollar spent. And then we can just take the marginal revenue product of capital over the marginal factor cost of capital. And that gives us the benefit of capital per dollar spent. So now we've got a formula that says, what should we do? Should we hire or should we hire more laborers or buy more capital? In fact, I'm going to get rid of this equal sign for a second. Okay. Um, let's say 
that was the situation. Well, if that was the situation, per dollar spent, we're getting more benefits from labor than capital. So if you get this result, that you get a higher number here than here, hire more labor, don't buy more capital. Now, if you get that result, of course, do what? Buy more capital, don't hire more labor. You're getting more benefit per dollar spent on capital. So we're going to keep doing this, okay? If we have an inequality, we'll buy the, the one that we've got greater, okay? We can get more of that until what happens? They become equal. Now we know both how much labor and how much capital we're going to spend, okay? This tells us how much labor to hire just looking at labor. This one is all about should we spend money on labor or capital? And that's marginal analysis. There's our equalities. This is when we're maximizing, okay? When we hit that, at that equality, we're maximizing. We're getting the maximum benefit. Anyhow, thanks for tuning in. That's marginal analysis for the factor market.